You will need this message at one point in your life. A college professor once gave her students an essay to write about the worst day of their lives and the best day of them. They were all roughly 18 years old, with little life experience. But when they submitted the essays, she started reading and was shocked by the things some of them wrote. It became apparent to her that although they were young, some of them had experienced horrific days that would break fully grown adults that had years of life experience. Some lost their parents all in the space of a year. Others had faced illness when they were younger. Others had lost loved ones. This lady found out the reality about life, and that is, it is indiscriminatory. And as she was reading these letters, she could sense the urgency. She could sense the severity. She could sense the hopelessness. And as she carried on reading, she realized that although all of these college kids look normal, they had all been through so much. We all will have bad days and tough seasons. Yes, yes, some more than others. But regardless of how good and wonderful your life is, you will experience dark days and tough seasons. Even the happiest and most beautiful marriages, the marriages that are full of joy, laughter and love, marriages that last 30, 40, 50 years, still end with heartbreak when one of the partners pass on. Some people's worst days might not even be something too bad in the face of other people, but to you, it is something that pains you It is something that hurts you in the deepest part of your being. The worst day of your life is relative to each individual. For some, it's the day their spouse told them, I am leaving. For others, it is a doctor's visit and they are told they have illness. For others, it is watching their loved ones going through suffering and pain as they step into eternity, watching them slowly deteriorate, watching them fall slowly into that dark tunnel, watching them go through pain and anguish, as layer after layer of their health is stripped away from them. Those who have seen it know that it's not a pretty sight. For some, it is a phone call in the middle of the night to hear their child has been arrested and your heart drops three inches and they are overwhelmed by the pain. There are people whose lives are broken and bruised and there is no hope for them. So what do you do when all hell breaks loose? I mean when real calamity hits, when all hell throws the kitchen sink at you? What do you do when your job lets you go? What do you do when the doctor says you only have two weeks to live? What do you do when your marriage is one argument away from a divorce? What do you do when your loved one gets admitted into hospital? You must do what Hezekiah did. You must do what Hezekiah did. We need this lesson from the king of Judah. King Hezekiah became sick. He became so sick, I mean to the point of death. The king was at a crossroads. He wasn't sure if he was going to make it. I would like to ask you, what day do you think would be worse than the day receiving news that you only had a limited amount of time to live and after that you would die? Second Kings, 20 verse 1 in those days hezekiah was sick and near death and isaiah the prophet the son of amos went to him 
and said to him, Thus says the Lord, Set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. Hezekiah had a terminal illness, and to make matters worse, God sent him news of this from the prophet Isaiah to tell him that he would die. A true man of God told him this, Thus says the Lord, Set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. Now listen to me, listen to me Christian. It doesn't matter how bad your situation is. It doesn't matter how hopeless your situation is. Go to God. Go to God. He has the final say. What Hezekiah did was a legendary act. He went straight to God. He didn't go to his wife. He didn't go to his close group of friends. He didn't even say anything to Isaiah the prophet. He could have asked Isaiah to pray for him, but he didn't. Hezekiah knew that no one could pray for his life like he could pray for himself. He had nothing to say to Isaiah, but the one who sent Isaiah, he went to God and prayed. Christians, you should never allow a bad situation to make you forget God. You should never allow a situation to make you forget God. Go to God without any hesitation. Look at what the king did. 2 Kings 20 verse 2 to 3 Then he turned his face toward the wall and prayed to the Lord, saying, Remember now, O Lord, I pray how I have walked before you in truth and with a loyal heart, and have done what was good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed with everything that he had in him. Next time you're in a situation like Hezekiah, a situation that threatens you, a situation that grips you with fear, you must turn your face to the wall and pray with everything that you've got. Don't give up on your situation. Don't quit in your situation. Don't die in your situation. Don't give up hope. Don't throw in the towel. Let me tell you, God still answers prayers. God is still on his throne. God is still performing miracles. God is still healing the sick. God is still raising the dead. God is still opening blind eyes. No matter what the devil has done to you, no matter how difficult the situation you are facing, you need to do what Hezekiah did. You need to call upon the name of Jesus. When your back is against the wall, you need to know how to call on the name of Jesus. When all hell breaks loose, you need to know how to call on the name of Jesus. When you're in trouble, you need to call on the name of Jesus. When the doctor says that there is nothing more that we can do for you. When your job says you are no longer required. When you pick up the phone and the voice on the other line says there has been an accident. When your spouse says, I want a divorce, you need to be able to call on the name of Jesus. You need to call on the name of Jesus. There is hope and wholeness in the name of Jesus. There were only 30 words in Hezekiah's prayer, but they brought an answer that gave him 15 more years to live and reign in Judah. For every two words, God added a year onto his life. Now, let's pay attention to what he said. He asked God to remember how he had been walking with him with a perfect heart. I want to direct this question to you. How have you been walking with God? Have you been following the words of God? Have you ever surrendered yourself to Christ and allow Him to take control of your life? Are you holy before the Lord? Hezekiah reminded God how he had been walking perfectly before Him. That should tell you something. You must walk perfectly before the Lord. 
Don't go about sinning. Be in the Lord and stay away from sin. Most things that happen to us happen because we ignore some divine information that will help us and keep us safe and keep us on the right path. I encourage you to flee from sin so that on a day where you are in trouble, you too can pray such a prayer to God. 2 Kings 20 verses 4 to 6 And it happened, before Isaiah had gone out into the middle court, that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Return, and tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people, Thus says the Lord, the God of David your father, I have heard your prayer, I have seen your tears, surely I will heal you. On the third day you shall go up to the house of the Lord, and I will add to your days fifteen years. I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city for my own sake and for the sake of my servant David. The Lord is telling you that he will do a new thing, that the worst day of your life will be forgotten. You shall not dwell on it any more. The word of the Lord is that he will do a new thing. If you have been embarrassed before, if you have been disappointed before, and you have nothing with you, if people have rejected you, if you have lost your loved ones, the Lord is saying, he will do a new thing. It doesn't matter how dark your worst day is, no matter how long it has been haunting you. Maybe you caused that terrible thing to happen and you feel you cannot forgive yourself for allowing it. The Lord is saying to you today that he will do a new thing in your life. It is not over for you. Isaiah 43 verse 19 Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. He is the CEO of the universe and is in control at all times. Nothing happens without his approval or go-ahead. This all-powerful God is your heavenly Father and is saying to you today, My child, I love you. Fear not, for I am with you. I am with you in all the seasons of life, through the good and the bad, in summer and winter. Nothing can separate you from me. Nothing can separate my love from you. But all you need to do is have faith. When we say God will make a way, what is implied is that God has solutions for you. He will make an escape for you even in the middle of the toughest battle. The feeling of defeat and hopelessness we have is a manipulation from the devil to blind us from seeing what God can do for us. If you want to see the manifestation of God's power, you have to believe in his power to save. Jeremiah 32 verse 27 says, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? There is no impossibility in God. There is no challenge greater than God's saving power. This is a truth we have to always preach to ourselves to strengthen our faith.